the Chairman of Ways and Means and the Alston Brighton District City Councilor. Today is Monday, July 31st. Uh, we are here with the Boston Public School Department as it uh, pertains to docket 1001, message and order approving appropriations of $600,000 for the purpose of paying for the cost of feasibility study and schematic design work associated with projects at the following schools. East Boston High School, boiler replacement, O'Donnell School, K-5, to boiler replacement, Sumner School, K-5, to boiler replacement, Timothy Middle School, boiler replacement, Tobin School, K-8, through boiler replacement, Up Academy, K-8, through window replacement, and the Russell School, K-5, through roof, roof replacements. Uh, this includes the payment of all costs, incidental or related thereto, and for which the City of Boston may be eligible for a grant from the Massachusetts School Building Authority, said amount to be expended under the direction of the Public Facilities Department on behalf of the Boston Public Schools. Uh, I'd like to remind folks that this hearing is being broadcast and recorded on Comcast Channel 8, RCN Channel 2, as well as uh, Verizon um, Fios. We encourage public testimony. We would appreciate it if you would sign in and check off the box to testify. We also encourage written testimony via email or, um, or mail. And finally, we would ask that uh, everyone please silence any electronic devices. And with that, uh, we are here with Brian McLaughlin. Uh, welcome, Brian, and uh, to give us an overview of this project. Thank you, Councillor. Um, the, the Massachusetts School Building Authority is the state authority that oversees uh, the funding of public school construction projects within the Commonwealth. Uh, the MSBA is a reimbursement agency, and it, it works with local communities to figure out the most fiscally responsible and educationally appropriate solution for various issues that may be in, in their facilities. The authority is funded through one penny of each uh, of the sales tax in Massachusetts. Uh, Mayor Walsh has made it a point to try to utilize this agency um, more so than, than in past years with the, within the city of Boston, and he's successfully done so over the past two years, uh, specifically with the accelerator repair program. Um, the first step in the MSBA process is to submit a statement of interest to the MSBA. Uh, this allows districts to notify the school building authority that there are certain issues within a facility. The MSB will review those SOIs and then figure out what uh, the solution would be for a, a specific problem. MSBA has two programs. They have the core program, which is for major renovations, large repairs, and new school construction. And then there's the accelerated repair program. That's strictly for roofs, windows, and boilers, and otherwise structurally sound facilities. Um, again, the, MS, the ARP is, is limited to roof, windows, and boilers. Um, these repair projects are used to extend, uh, extend the life of a building that otherwise can pr provide the program that is desired by the particular school and the school district. Um, working with the City of Boston, Boston Public Schools, uh, facilities team in gathering information from the Bill BPS master plan. The city submitted 11 statements of interest to the MSBA for the accelerator repair program, which you listed previously. Uh, they were boilers at East Boston High School, O'Donnell, Sumner, Timothy, and Tobin. Uh, we also submitted roofs for the Curly Russell, windows for the Chittick, Kilmer, Marshall, Up Academy, and the Perry School. Um, through their review process, they moved forward seven schools at this, their most recent board meeting in June. Those were the uh, boiler replacements at the Sumner School, East Boston High School, O'Donnell, Timothy, a window replacement at Marshall Up Academy, uh, boiler at the Tobin, and roof at the Russell. So what we're here today is to request um, $600,000 for the feasibility study through schematic design of these seven schools. Um, that once this money is appropriated from the city council, which we require two votes, um, the MSBA will then assign an OPM in designer to the city of Boston to work in collaboration with 
uh, the Boston Public Facilities Department, uh, Boston Public Schools, to figure out what the best solution is for these seven facilities. Um, the four schools that didn't, were not moved forward were a result of a review of the statement of interest, which is more or less the MSBA application, and a visit out to those schools. Um, after talking to the MSBA this year, they had to do things a little differently because they received so many statements of interest. So the way they, they reviewed these was, um, was changed a little bit. In the past, the building systems had to be at least 20 years old, but this year they bumped it up to 30. So some of the four schools that were passed on this time, we, we'll, have a, we'll have the ability to, to resubmit in future years. Um, the schedule going forward, if you want me to run through it real quick sure. for these schools. Sure. Um, Obviously, today is the hearing. First vote, hopefully on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I believe the next city council uh, meeting is August 28th. 20, 28th. 28th. Yeah. Um, so that would be the second vote. Um, we'd have the money in hand 20 days later. MSBA would assign OPM and design it probably sometime in February. Uh, we'd work with them through the beginning of next year, hopefully get biddable documents in the spring, and these projects would hopefully be in construction next summer. Um, the one project that might be delayed to the following year is windows because the lead time associated with window projects is so long that sometimes they get bumped out uh, a full school year. Um, currently, over the past two years, the council has approved um, money for 12 accelerated repair program projects that are currently in construction uh, throughout the city. So with the 2015 submission, um, we have a total project budget of about $29 million and we're getting $16.4 million reimbursed through the state. The 2016 round of statements of uh, MSBA Accelerated Repair Program projects, we're getting about over $6 million on $9 million in construction at five schools. So we're getting a $15 million value on that. So we're putting up nine, they're giving us six? Yes. Nice. No, so it's nine total, and they're oh. giving six of the nine. Oh. And in, the, in 2015, it's about $29 million, and we're getting a little over 16. And, and, and Brian, that is the um, the usual reimbursement of almost 65 percent. Yeah, so our, our reimbursement rate is 65.47 percent. So on eligible costs, uh, we'll get 65 percent right. right. so reimbursement. We'll probably somewhere in the vicinity of 30, 370,000 back, even on the feasibility for the upfront well, costs. Right? Yes. Yep, that's fully reimbursable. And, oh, let me acknowledge that I've been joined by my friend from Dorchester, Councilor Frank Baker. Um, do you have any more questions? Well, are we going to do questions now? Just a couple. Yeah, oh, are you, yeah I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. fine. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Cool. Hi, Brian. Councilor, how are good you? Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, I'm good. <clears throat> a couple of things. So, this feasibility, will this get, will this, um, this will basically map out how the work's gonna go. Or what 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 is the feasibility? What's the document gonna look at when it's done? Sure. When we get we get the OPM and in, in, the OPM comes on first. OPM being office. owner's project manager. Okay. Um, that's a requirement through the the MSBA accelerator repair program. And they appoint them. First. They appoint them. It's uh, randomly selected. Um, they come on board. They help us negotiate the fee for the designer. Designer comes on board. Um, we have project managers in house at PFD that work with them along with BPS facilities, go out and visit these buildings to figure out what the best roofing system may be or mm -hmm. what the best type of windows in a boiler system may be to make sure that um, they interact well with the other building systems that are currently in place. And the feasibility study that's, that's worked out so when we're pricing it, we know exactly what we're, we're getting. Right. So feasibility, this, this, this upfront, uh, these upfront dollars, will bring us to a point where we'll, we'll have a good understanding of scope, cost, and schedule moving forward, likely by, I don't know, late winter, early spring of next year, okay. 2018. And Brian, you had mentioned four, four projects that didn't make the cut. What were mm. those four and what were we going to do with them? Those four were Chittick Elementary, the Kilmer, the Perry. What, was, what did Chittick want? Chittick, uh, Chittick, these are Chittick windows, Kilmer windows, Perry windows, and Curly roof. Yeah. So. so it was just, um, again, the MSBA received so many requests this year, they had to look at it at a different angle. Yeah. And um, we'll be eligible to re reapply, resubmit. resubmit in future years. Um, maybe even this year we could do it again, depending upon how many, they kind of have to change how they look at things, depending, because they have a budget they have to adhere to yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
uh, to that point, those four um, mm -hmm. won't, uh, will be resubmitted. Were they looked at as possibly not as in dire need? As like, is that how they prioritize them? There's, yeah, there's there's definitely uh, they look at at several things: uh, age of systems, um, the cost of the project has to be over two hundred fifty thousand dollars. In need is a huge right. is a huge uh, factor right. in which projects they move forward. Right. And typically these projects are all completed during the summertime so that by the time school starts it's all completed. Sure, yeah, we have 12 underway right now, uh, seven windows, three boilers and two roofs. Uh, the boilers and roofs um, are more easily manageable because they there's less impact directly to the students with these projects because they're kind of we can get them done in sooner the the in the roof. basement on the roof, right? right? So the windows working closely with B, Bill B, uh, with BPS. Mm -hmm. uh, we've worked um, over the past several months with the school leaders, headmasters, principals, knowing that there is going to be some work remaining, likely in, into September. Mm -hmm. But we're trying to minimize the impact on the educational spaces. Right. So we're focusing on getting all the um, the classrooms Classroom. done this summer and maybe some of the non-educational spaces may linger into the September. Great. But all the work will be done once school starts after school hours. Great. Um, nice work, Brian. Thank you. Yeah. Not to get into the last administration, but we know they didn't take any of the state money, and I, I got to hand it to you guys for, 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 you know, noticing there was a hole there and taking, you know, doing what's best for our city. Thank you. Thank you. And the mayor's made a priority, and with, and with your assistance, you guys have passed everything forward with us. Absolutely. Great. And I echo the comments of my good friend, Frank, here. Um, so with that, um, I will be advancing docket 1001 for its first vote on Wednesday. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, This hearing is adjourned. and means and the Alston Brighton District City Councilor. Today is Monday, July 31st. We are here uh, to review docket 1002, message and order, approving an increase of the cost of living adjustment, the COLA, base from 13,000 to 14,000 for all retirees and beneficiaries of the Boston Retirement System. I am joined by my good friend from West Roxbury, uh, JP. Uh, Matt O'Malley, uh, I'd ask folks in the chamber if you'd like to testify uh, to sign in and indicate on the sheet that you'd like to testify. Uh, please state your name, address, and any affiliation. Uh, I'd also like to let folks know that this uh, hearing is both being broadcast and recorded on RCN Channel 82 and Comcast Channel 8. And I'd ask folks in the chamber to silence their electronic devices. I would like to uh, welcome to the chamber um, Ellen McCarthy, Parig Lydon, and Tim Smith for their uh, presentation on this docket. Thank you very much, Councilor. Uh, again, my name is Timothy Smith. I'm the executive officer of the Boston Retirement System. And as you mentioned, to my right is Ellen McCarthy. She's our interim comptroller. And to my left is Park Lydon, our general counsel. Uh, just briefly, uh, as you indicated, we're here for the COLA base. Massachusetts pension law allows us to increase the COLA base under certain circumstances. Uh, as you may know, COLA is based on a, a percentage. Uh, it's historically the Boston Board has granted a 3% COLA uh, year after year but it's based on a base. It's not based on a person's complete retirement allowance. Uh, since August 10th, 2012, the COLA base has been $13,000. So it's 3% on, thir presently 3% on $13,000. That is what a retiree from Boston receives as a COLA year after year. Um, we're making a, a request today to increase that base to $14,000. Massachusetts law requires that after the board vote that it be approved by city council, which is obviously where we are today. Um, just to give you some background on the board, I did pass out this uh, 
This is a retirement board funded ratio memo from PERAC. It, 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 at a thumbnail, it kind of gives an idea of how financially strong we are. And as you can see, uh, we're, uh, as of uh, 1 1 16, we're 75 percent funded. Our um, fully funded schedule date is 2025. And if you go up the list, you can see we're one of the more aggressive systems in the state. And as far as big city boards, we're, we're one of the more highly funded boards as well. Uh, Ms. McCarthy was very kind to boil down in this, in this uh, document here that we passed out the costs associated with, with this COLA base increase. Um, currently, our year to date rate of return, we're at plus 8.6% net of fees. Uh, we've already hit our target, which we're obviously delighted about, but we still have a number of months to go until the year's out, so we're not counting our chickens yet. Um, and I would like to turn it over if you have any questions. Sure, thanks, Tim. Uh, the, um, so obviously we're going to keep the funding schedule to the 2025 period, but it's going to increase. Oh, just for the record, could you give us an indication of what the increased payment will be going forward? The unfunded liability will increase by $25.4 million with this increase to 14000 2025. Okay. And that will require an additional FY18 appropriation? Correct. I think that's 10.35% yes. greater than FY17. Gotcha. Then the cost will increase yearly uh, by 8.85%. Yes. Right. And you said that the, this year's return was 8.6% as today. of right now, today, yeah, right? right. So obviously the markets fluctuate and, yeah. we, you know, we could tank next yeah, month and right. we will hit lose, but right, right now we're plus 8.6% and net of fees. Right. And I think last year, was last year below 7% return? We were, we were above it, but not by much. Not by much. And our IRR our, our, our is 7.75%. Right, that's what we're right, basing everything. IRA, so we, I should say, investment return and assumption. And it's still 7.75. Because so we haven't touched that or, or the right. funded date. Right. Uh, does it impact our OPEB liability at all? I can't really speak to that, Counselor. It's a little beyond my uh, okay. expertise. Okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, Counselor O'Malley, do you have anything? Uh, I don't other than to really thank Angela Cristiani and her team for pushing this. I'm proud to support it. Uh, your predecessor, Mr. Chairman, famously said that in this room we often lose votes, so it's nice to uh, support <laughs> some good sense legislation that I think is fair, modest, obviously the city can afford, it's the right thing to do. So proud to be in support of this, and thank you, Tim, and your team for uh, the great work. Thank you very much. Great. Um, well, let me uh, bring up uh, Sam Tyler. You want to? Come up and testify, please. Sam Tyler from the Boston Municipal Research Bureau. Mr. Chairman and member, uh, for the record, my name is Sam Tyler, president of the Boston Municipal Research Bureau. And unlike Previous speakers, I'm here to oppose the $14,000 base and suggest that the council keep it at $13,000. Our concern, as you know from prior testimonies, is that the city do nothing to increase the liability but to uh, ensure that they that the city maintains the schedule to reach full funding of the pension liability by 2025. And as you've already heard. This vote uh, would increase the pension liability by 2025 uh, by $25.4 million. So in our view, this is moving the city in the wrong direction. Um, the the uh, city's pension liability at this point in time, based on the actual actuarial evaluation of January 1 of 2016, is only 69.4 percent based on uh, market valuation, so that uh, we've got a long way to go in that respect. Uh, 
You know, we're concerned about the city's sizable long-term unfunded pension and retiree health insurance liability uh, and their growing cost and the implication for future city services. Um, so based on, on the uh, current actuarial evaluation and, and review report for the Boston Retirement System as of January 1, 2016, the most recent report, uh, Boston's annual pension appropriation will increase from $221 million in fiscal 200, 2018 to an estimated $393.8 million in 2025. That's an increase of $172.6 million or 78% over seven years. Uh, I think that is concerning, of course. Uh, this year budget, uh, in, at least in terms of what was approved by the city council, the budget for the pension system will increase by 11%, while the overall city budget increased only by 4.9%. And that's one of the issues that we're seeing also in uh, over the you know trends over the years that uh, the, the mandatory uh, uh, non-discretionary expenses are increasing at a much faster pace than the departmental services, basically you know seven percent to to five percent or actually four point nine percent, and that trend is troubling if that were to continue, and this will add to that. Um, you know the. Over the, at least our numbers were the, over the last four years, the uh, retirement board's investment return on a market basis was 6.28 percent, which is, I think, a more reliable basis than the uh, actuarial numbers that you heard. Um, and we've also looked at other states where there's more of a tendency to not include, not allow any uh, COLA increase until that the retirement system reached 80% of full funding. And, you know, we're, we're at 69%. So our recommendation has been to follow that pattern, not increase the COLA base increase. We have supported the 3% of the, uh, the 13,000 COLA, but not, not uh, increasing the base to, to, to 14,000. So basically for all those reasons and the fact that you know it's important to reach full funding of the pension liability by 2025 so we can the city can really seriously address the 2.26 billion OPEB liability and the pension liability and the change in the base though it will have no impact on OPEB since that's based on the retirement I mentioned sorry the the uh, health insurance liability but the, you know, reaching, reaching full funding by 2025 means that basically 84% of what is paid in 2025 for pensions goes away. Those dollars then could be transferred to the OPEB liability uh, along, but keeping some of those dollars with the pension system to ensure that it remains at full funding. So uh, for those reasons, the, the impact, future impact on the on the operating budget, I mean, the operating budget increased, uh, I mean, the resubmittal included a, a $3 million increase in the pension appropriation because of, of increasing the, or the anticipated vote by the city council to approve the uh, base increase. Uh, and that $3 million will increase each year up until 25, 2025. So clearly in your deliberations with other departmental spending, I think you could identify other areas where three million dollars could come in very handy in lieu of, you know, increasing the pension appropriation. So knowing full well the vote on Wednesday, uh, we still maintain our position that there should be no increase in the COLA base uh, at this time uh, and do nothing to, to change in any way the ability to, for the city to reach uh, full funding by 2025. Thank you, Sam. Uh, let me acknowledge that we've just been joined by uh, at-large city councilor Anissa Sabi-George. I don't. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
Let me echo the comments from uh, Matt O'Malley to thank Angela Cristiani for being here today. Did anyone else want to testify? Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Connolly. And while he's coming up, uh, I'd just like to, for the record, say that the last time we did adjust the COLA was uh, in 19, uh, 2012, correct? Correct. And there is one item I should probably point out. Um, by statute, if we do increase the bases, there's no going back. Right. So it, once it's set, it's by law it's set. There's no right. buyer's remorse five years down the road. If right. It stays there. It, it stays can only go up, it can't go down. Correct. And, and just, you know, um, I think we're being the responsible generation right now. We're paying down this liability, and it's, it's basically falling on the shoulders of our, our current retirees. And to Sam's point, when we do fund this in 2025 and start um, chipping away at our OPEB liability, this generation of city workers will have paid that down uh, after uh, assuming the liability for generations past. So, you know, again, we're trying to balancing, balance, you know, uh, the city's financial health, which I think we're doing a pretty good job at, but also not not totally put it on the backs of our current retirees. Mr. Connolly, I'm sorry. Go. Thank you, Councilor. My name is Lawrence Connolly. I'm the uh, uh, co-chair of the B2 Retired Teachers Chapter uh, Legislative Committee. We've been working on trying to increase this call for uh, quite a while. We uh, uh, worked on the state level to uh, get it enabled, and we've been working on the uh, city level. I appreciate the fact that there's an unfunded liability, uh, but that's not the fault of the retirees. They pay their uh, uh, percentage in, which was required uh, every year. It's up to 11% now on teachers, uh, which is one of the highest in the, in the nation. Uh, and uh, the unfunded liability was because the retirement system uh, prior to 1987 was basically a Ponzi scheme. Uh, money came in, it was paid out to the people that uh, retired, and uh, very little of it was, was invested. Uh, so it, uh, it really wasn't uh, sustainable. Uh, the way it's being run now is responsible, but unfortunately the burden is being placed on the people that are currently retired. They shouldn't have to accept the entire burden. Uh, Mr. Tyler referred to the fact that some systems uh, in other states are not uh, currently giving uh, colas, uh, uh, and that, that's true, but some states, uh, retirees are paying nothing into their uh, uh, retirement system. Uh, uh, you all remember the big to-do in uh, uh, Wisconsin when they, uh, uh, people were sitting in. That's because they were going to raise the, uh, or they were going to charge retirees 5% for their pension. Well, people in Boston were paying 11 percent. People in Massachusetts were paying 11 percent uh, for quite a uh, while too. And th these other systems that are not paying colas uh, pay into Social Security. We're one of seven states that do not pay into Social Security. If we were paying into Social Security, uh, the city would be paying 6.2 percent on on whatever uh, earnings someone uh, made. Uh, people then would get up about twenty-seven, twenty-eight thousand uh, dollars in Social Security benefits that, benefits that Massachusetts retirees do not get. Uh, you get an, a COLA increase every year based on the CPI. We don't get that. Uh, so uh, there, there are some OPEB liabilities down the line. But we're talking about apples and oranges. Not every retiree gets uh, uh, health benefits from uh, the city. Uh, we don't know what uh, is going to come down the line. Uh, the city, is, uh, in its first year back in 2010, uh, say, I think it was 2000, yeah, 2010, they saved $17.5 million when they mandated Medicare. Now, that meant that uh, uh, retirees uh, were, uh, had to pay Medicare benefits uh, on earnings that they made outside the retirement system. Uh, and b benefits that the city never matched the, retire uh, the social care payments on. So uh, I don't like to uh, 
minimize the OPEP benefits, but th that's something completely different. We could have national health. Nobody knows what's going to happen in, in Congress. There could be single pay of health insurance, and that wipes out the entire OPEP benefits. Uh, so I think we should concentrate just on the retirement benefits. Uh, that's what uh, the liability is. And uh, the city says, the, uh, uh, the mayor's uh, uh, financial uh, advisor, Mr. Sweeney, said that the city can handle uh, an increase to $1,000. Boston is booming. Uh, on top of their 2.5% uh, tax ability, uh, they got $75 million more coming in this year. The retirees should share in some of that benefit. They built the city. They worked for 40 years putting out the fires, policing the streets, uh, teaching the children, sweeping the streets and plowing the streets. Uh, so we're not asking for charity. We're asking for our due, and the city can afford it, and we think it should be granted. Thank you, Mr. Connolly, um, for that testimony. Yeah. Everybody's good? Okay. Well, thank you all for, for uh, your testimony. We will take this up at our council meeting on Wednesday. This hearing stands adjourned. Thank you very much. Thanks.